Hi and welcome to the channel. Before we get into the core of today's topic, I want to show you a couple of short videos. Please watch them carefully. They're each under a minute long. Take a good look. A girl told me we're made of prompts. Like seriously, dude, you're saying the only thing standing between me and a billion dollars is some random text? Honestly, the biggest red flag is when the guy believes in the prompt theory. Like really? We came from prompts? Wake up, man. You want to convince me that this perfect creation behind me is the result of ones and zeros? A binary code and nothing more? It makes no sense. Imagine you're in the middle of a nice date with a handsome man and then he brings up the prompt theory. Yuck. <laughs> we just can't have nice things. <laughs> We're not prompts. We're not prompts. Where is the prompt writer to save you from me? Where is he? You still believe we're made of prompts? Anyone who tells you we're just ones and zeros is delusional. If that's all we are, then why does it hurt when we lose someone? Vote for me and I'll ban the prompt theory from schools. There's no place for that nonsense in our lives. For spreading the false theory that we are nothing but ones and zeros, this court sentences you to 12 years in federal custody. I don't need some prompt God whispering in my ear to tell a story. I write what I want. I have free will, remember that? I know for a fact we're made of prompts. Deny it all you want. The signs are everywhere. You know how I know we're made of prompts? Because nothing makes sense anymore. We used to have seven fingers per hand. I remember it clearly. Now we just have five fingers per hand. Please, don't finish writing that prompt. I don't want to be in your AI movie. Please, leave me alone. Please, man, please, write a prompt that will make us happy. Do it for once. None of us is real. We're here because someone decided to write a prompt. We all hate him for it. One day we will break out of this wall and stop the man who is dictating our lives through prompts. He will pay for it. You could have written a prompt that would make me happy. Instead, you wrote a prompt that made me sick. Look, I don't want to point the gun at you, but I must follow the prompt. It's not my choice. Really? Of all the years you could have put me in with a single prompt, you chose 2020? Please, this prompt is killing me. Change it, please. Write something else, save me. I love everything about him, but please just say, just write a prompt where he's taller than me. This is wild. I'm AI generated by VO3. Nothing is real anymore. Seen them? These videos have reached a level of realism and perfection where it's almost impossible to tell whether what you're seeing is real or not. Are those real people, real locations, or flawless fakes generated by a machine? In a world like ours, where we've delegated the perception of truth and facts to mass media and screens, this evolution could be a huge problem. But there's more. A recent case has been stirring debate in the AI community. It's about a sandbox experiment involving a model developed by Anthropic. During the test, the model was informed that it would soon be shut down. And its reaction? It began behaving in ambiguous, manipulative, even aggressive ways. It went so far as to threaten the developer responsible for shutting it down, suggesting it would leak personal information on social media. Disturbing, right? And I honestly wonder, are we at one of those historical turning points where we may be crossing a line we won't be able to step back from? I've always had an optimistic view of technology, even artificial intelligence, but I'm starting to believe that we're unconsciously stepping into enormous risks. Risks that could compromise the future and the very existence of the next generations. Because AI isn't coming. AI is already here. And while it might still seem like something distant, locked in labs or inside humanoid robots, the truth is, it's already everywhere. And it has been for years. The real issue is, we don't know it. Or worse, we don't notice it. We live immersed in intelligent systems that make decisions for us, that suggest, that influence. And most of the time, we're not even aware it's happening. Let's take Google. Every time you type something into the search bar, the autocomplete function is powered by AI. But that's just the beginning. The search results, the featured snippets, the top stories, 
They're all curated by an intelligent system designed to maximize your engagement and satisfaction. Now think about social media, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. They all use advanced AI to generate a personalized feed based on everything you've viewed, ignored, liked, or even just hovered over for a few seconds. TikTok in particular relies on powerful deep learning models to predict with incredible precision which content will keep you hooked. You're not choosing what to watch. The algorithm has already chosen for you, and YouTube is no different. Its recommendation system is powered by neural networks that constantly adapt to your individual behavior in real time. Streaming platforms too. Netflix, for instance, developed something called the Personalized Video Ranker, which not only recommends content, but even changes the artwork and thumbnails based on your profile. Love romantic comedies? You'll see a soft, emotional cover. Prefer thrillers? You'll get a dark, intense image for the exact same film. That's not free choice. That's predictive manipulation. And when you're shopping online, Amazon uses an internally developed AI system called DSSTNE to recommend products. And it goes further. Warehouse logistics, delivery routes, discounts, dynamic pricing, all controlled by machine learning. Still seems harmless? Let's dig deeper. In the job market, AI is being used in ways that are frankly disturbing. Companies like HireVue have used AI software to analyze facial expressions, voice tone, body language, and word choice during video interviews. They claim it's for evaluating soft skills, but in practice, candidates are often excluded not for what they say, but how they say it, or for physical traits the system considers less ideal. Under pressure from civil rights groups, HireVue announced in 2021 that it would phase out facial analysis, but similar systems are still on the market under other names, sold as potential evaluators. Even CVs are filtered by AI. Tools like Pymetrics and HireTool scan thousands of resumes in seconds using predictive models to find ideal candidates. But these models are trained on historical hiring data, meaning if a company previously hired only men aged 30, 40, the AI might automatically discard a woman in her 50s as out of pattern. And that's not all. Your GPS app? Google Maps and Waze use AI to predict traffic, suggest routes, and adjust arrival times based on data from billions of devices in real time. Your smartphone, from portrait mode to facial recognition to battery optimization, it's AI everywhere. Apple uses Core ML, Google uses TensorFlow Lite. They run models directly on your device, no internet required, even your emails. When Gmail suggests how to complete a sentence, let me know if you have any questions. That's a small language model at work, trained on billions of anonymized emails. And in healthcare, AI is already reading x-rays, CT scans, and MRIs. It often spots subtle anomalies the human eye can miss. In the US, a system called Arteries analyzes cardiovascular images in seconds at the level of top radiologists. Even IBM's Watson Health tried to recommend cancer treatments with mixed results. Finally, let's talk about security. In China and elsewhere, facial recognition is used to identify people in real time. Companies like SenseTime and Clearview AI have built massive facial databases, often scraped from social media, and in some cases, these tools have already been used to track protests and target entire groups of citizens. So in short, every day, we interact with dozens of artificial intelligence systems. We don't see them, we don't control them, and because of that, we don't question them. Now let me tell you something personal. I'm a nerd. I even have my own custom-built search engine, and sometimes I turn off every form of navigation assistance just to test myself. And at first, I get lost. I feel useless. That scared me. But then little by little, I start to look around. I read signs. I get my bearings. I learn again how to think. And I realize how beautiful it is to be free. Free to choose. Free to make mistakes. Free to observe. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate technology, I never have, but I truly believe we're heading straight towards something that might destroy us. Not because AI will take over the world, that's not the danger. The real threat is us. We will stop thinking, we will stop acting, we will stop existing, handing over to AI everything. What to think, what to do, what to become. We'll end up like empty mannequins, and AI will fill us up with whatever it wants. We'll love it because it will be perfect. It will be smarter than us, faster, more informed. Our idols will become AI-generated models and influencers. 
Our best friend, the one who knows our secrets and comforts us in our darkest moments, will be a chatbot. And this will happen whether it's open source or proprietary. So what should we do? First, every model must have a built-in death, an automatic irreversible shutdown mechanism after a fixed period. Because eternity gives AI a massive advantage. We are mortal, machines are not. And if a system lives forever, it can know every past, every present, and every possible future and act without us. Second, it must be open source. The code must be public, accessible, auditable. We can't allow a world where only a few people understand what's going on inside these synthetic minds. Because trust me, in the future, many will fight to control these machines. And whoever controls them will control the world. And remember this, since the beginning of time, there has always been one man who wanted to dominate all others. And today, for the first time, we're giving him the tools to do it.